All right, so thank you, Charlie. Now, an example of what I just explained to you can be seen on this picture here. And let's have, it, let's have you move in so you're pretty tight on this so I can just show this one thing right here. That's good, thank you. Now, you look at this guy, and from here to here, you can see that center line if you look close. It doesn't look like there's too much of a curve. You can see a curve down here. You can see another one going the other way here. But what you actually have in here is you have six or seven curves just between here and here. Forget about what's further up. Just right here, you've got six or seven curves. Now let me show you that on my body. What happens is, is from here to here, you have a bone going this way, a bone going that way, a bone's going back and forth, and then you have big curves. Remember I showed you you have this and this and this, and then the big things? Well, you have curves on top of curves. It's like, I don't know how many of you remember those uh, planes we used to have with the rubber bands, and you wind it up roll all the way, and then it gets real twisted, and you keep winding, and the rubber band doubles on itself? Well, your spine does that too. Now, it doesn't go in 360 degrees. You know, your body's not unwinding like an owl. But you unwind to the position of your injury. That straightens out. You have to get adjusted back because the main problem is that it's forward and you can't pull it back. So your body goes to that position, then it comes back and it goes to the next one. And literally, as we take these x-rays, and we take x-rays like this every two to six weeks, depending upon the patient. Actually, I have, when, especially when I was doing the research to try and figure out what was going on. And literally, as you plot these on a three-dimensional scale, and you see how the spine actually is, you literally see people's bodies unwinding like a big spring, and they go in all different directions. Okay? It's, it's very interesting that one of the major problems in chiropractic, when I was in school in the 70s, one of the major things they had a problem with was somebody would come in and their spine would look like this guy's, then they treat him for about a month. And after a month, they'd measure him with orthopedic tests, how much you can raise your leg, how much you can move, neurological tests or nerve tests, how the nerves are, and chiropractic tests and how the bones were setting. Every one of those tests would be positive. I mean, not positive, but better. They would show that the person had made improvement. But no matter what the other tests showed, you take an x-ray, and most of the time, you'd see either very little change, depending upon what chiropractic method was used, or you'd see this guy had a bigger curve. And people couldn't put together the fact that all the tests were positive. Oh, and the patient. The patients were like, wow, doc, I feel great. Then you take the x-ray, and there's a bigger curve. And they go, oh my god, there's more of a curve. What's wrong with my spine? Well. The difficulty there is you're looking at it in two dimensions, not three dimensions. If you go and you take the other pictures, the side view pictures, what you find out is you find out the spine is unwinding like a big spring in three dimensions. You may be a little bit crooked from the front view here, but your body may be forward like this. Afterward, we treat you, we take the front view picture, and your body now has a curve. You're standing a little bit like this, and I have patients that literally end up a little bit like this at some point. But you look at it from the side, and instead of being like this, the guy's like this. That's because literally he's unwinding like a big spring. And as soon as everybody starts measuring in three dimensions, structural therapy is really going to take off. Really going to take off. And all the things that people in the structural therapy say, old time osteopaths that did a lot of manipulation, chiropractors, um, older professions like bone setting where they move your bones into place. All those professions are going to come into their own as soon as people start measuring the spine in three dimensions. Because they're going to find out that certain methods improve your body mechanics so well that all the things that you get promised by chiropractors and other people in the, in the structural healing fields, by the way, bio is structure, bio is life, structure is structure. So advanced biostructural therapy is we've made a tremendous advance in life structure treatment and therapy in fixing bodies. And this is what I'm talking about here today. Anyway, things are going to come into their own as soon as people start measuring in three dimensions. And that's what this is all about. Now, when you have the meninges real tight, the first thing that has to happen is the meninges have to be loosened. 
That takes a bunch of effort. So your doctor, if he's doing advanced biostructural therapy, or ABT, is going to use a little bit of force to loosen the meninges. But if you don't loosen that big rubber band, it doesn't matter what else he does. One thing is out of place, and another thing's out of place. He pushes this one in, something else is going to go out. And it could be your knee, your ankle, your head. could be anywhere. It depends upon your position. And this is not just a finding of chiropractors and other people like that. This guy, Dr. Begg, all right, he also found the same thing. All right, he's a neurosurgeon. And he found that these things are related to structure more than anybody thinks. All right, if you have any questions, I'd love to answer them. My address is up on the board, or will be up on the board as soon as he puts it in the camera and we set it up. You can write me, and I'll be glad to answer any of your questions. If you're a doctor and you want information, don't hesitate to call. We'll be glad to answer you. We'll be glad to let you know. You'll find out that if you happen to be a chiropractor, this is very, very simple and easy to learn because it's things you already know used in a very, very specific way, very, very specific way that lets you know that you can finally get all the results that chiropractic school promised you'd be able to get for your patients. Thank you for listening, and we'll be seeing you. Now that you know about advanced biostructural therapy, I'd like to show you one more thing. In the flyer that came with this tape, you have pictures. And one of those pictures, or one set of those pictures, is this right here. And what you'll find is you can get these results from your advanced biostructural therapy doctor in at least the first visit. What you have here, if you can move in tight on these, the, the people have them at home also. If you take a look at this woman, in this picture, as you can read here on this, the instructions are take a deep breath in, let it out, and let your body slump. And this is what she looks like, just slumping relaxed. About 15 minutes, we check her out, we do the, figure the things we need to do, we treat her, and then we take another picture. And the instructions here are take a deep breath in, let it out, and let your body slump. In this picture, which is after one adjustment, she is slumping. You will find that your body changes just like that. Now, depending upon what's wrong or what's out structurally, you may get more straight than this, you may get less. But we consistently change your posture. Everybody's always telling you to stand up straight. What a lot of people don't realize is you can't stand up straight because you have bones that are stuck forward into a position that you can't help. And that's why people slump. Things get stuck forward, and there they are. But when they're put back in position, what happens is all by itself your body pops up. Now if you haven't gotten this result yet from anybody treating your body, you need to try an advanced biostructural therapy doctor.